this is what we make today. We are going to take three donuts. Let's name them A, B and C. From donut A, we are going to extract a curve on which we are going to roll some balls. And we will break donut B into some smaller parts. Followed by donut C from which we will extract a beautiful wireframe. You combine them all together and you get this masterpiece. So without any further delay, let's get started. All right, folks, so let's begin. Let's start by setting up the scene first, add in a plane. In the edit mode, select the back edge, E to extrude it up somewhere there, select the bottom edge, control B to bevel and smooth it down somewhere there. Up next, let's set up a camera, add in a camera there roughly, and let's keep this rotation up uh, for now zero, and X 90, let's face it that side. Drag in another window, control O to zoom it in and roughly adjust it. And I am going to use uh, portrait mode 1080 by 1920 resolution. In the camera settings, 75 mm will do it. Let's drag it a bit back. For now, let's keep a cube there so that we know the scale roughly. Let's rotate it. In the camera settings, let's just get this option in. Let's drag it back, maybe just simply raise the camera up and that is it, that, that's the place where we will be keeping our donut. Up next, let's delete it and let's spawn in a torus and I will increase the minor radius, make it a fat donut somewhere there. Let's scale it down and let's look up from our camera. I will press double R to randomly rotate it like that and let's slightly face it towards us maybe highlight the back edge and i think the placement is nice let's also give it some space and also save it for your sake let's drag it back let's give it some space all right that's it and now let's smooth it out control 2 to our subdivisions in and I will shift D to copy it down and on this donut uh, go into the edit mode press alt s to increase the size along the normals let's increase it roughly to there I think that's fine up next let's add in a decimate modifier on it and if you go into your wireframe mode and if I choose unsubdivide and I've increased the iterations you will see the mesh as Changed a bit, that is what we want. I will control A, visual geometry to mesh. We have this type of mesh, and if you press 2 on your keyboard and select any edge by pressing Alt, you will have this loop. Press P, select it out, delete it, we do not want it, and now we have a perfect curve on which our balls can roll. Up next, I will be copying this donut one more time. Press Tab, and this donut will be inside of this donut. Press Alt L, Alt S, sorry, and just simply drag this in along the normals, roughly there. All right, we have that in. Let's hide the outer donut for now, and and again add in a decimate modifier, and subdivide, make it to one, and add in a wireframe modifier on it we have beautiful mesh a wireframe on it now all right somewhere there thickness i think that's fine and now it's time to break this donut into pieces first of all i will select this add an solidify modifier and add thickness 2.03 control a visual geometry to mesh next step is to add in a cell fracture add-on if you don't have preferences add-ons if you type in cell fracture you will have this Take it off and if you go to your objects quick effect cell fracture these are my settings so limit is 300 margin is 0 0.001 recenter and everything is the same press ok and after a few seconds or maybe ears for some you will have these broken into pieces all right press m new collection and name it pieces whatever you want and i will delete the outer shell I do not want it all right and now let's uh, let's begin the geometry node part all right so first of all i would like to spawn in a cube press new 
and delete this part also delete it and delete and also hide this collection from viewport and the render and just bring this collection in here press relative separate children and connect it up and you will have it back but from the geo node and now we want two things to happen number one these elements should, should scale down scale instances and another is rotate instances this is to scale them down and this is to rotate them and now we want these two parameters scale and rotation to be controlled by an external object that is a ball and that ball should be on this curve so let's get that sorted i am going to take a uv sphere for the ball and scale it down i will press alt g this will place your ball into the world of origin that is important for the next step and uh, another, another step is that to convert this object into a curve objects convert and select this option this will be converted into a curve select the object follow path fixed position follow curve and now if you select this curve the ball will be placed on the curve you can scale it down roughly like that and if you increase this offset factor the ball will roll around now let's get back to the geometry node setup i will select the donut and i will get in a proximity node and i will also drag this sphere inside the node tree like this select relative and join geometry to geometry we'll get get in a math node select divide and divide distance by scale so this three node setup will grant us the axis of this ball scale and location and now let's see what happens if you plug this in not what we want until we add in a color ramp in between so we can settle in the effect like we wanted so it should be reversed i think we should be seeing something like this let's add it to your need i think this is fine this is scaling down and now if you select the ball and increase this factor you will see all the particles that are coming in contact with the ball i mean nearby they are scaling down up next let's work on the rotation now for the rotation nothing anything complicated i will get in a map range node let's get this in let's see what happens let's keep everything to zero from to min to max to nil let's plug this in now and if you increase the minimum to some extent the objects will rotate let's take it to around five or six as much as you like and if you increase this factor you will see they are scaling down and they are also rotating congratulations i guess i mean this will be around six or seven minutes and we have done it let's get into the shading part now for the shading part let's go into our render mode i am using cycles render all right let's get in a light above light area let's scale it like that i just need a bright and soft shadow underneath i will just scale it up i will also increase the power to around 50 maybe 40 would work i guess i guess that's fine now the thing is this should be a pop color i mean around red orange something like that let's get it to red maybe blue whatever you like let's change it to metallic also let's reduce the roughness a bit and also let increase a thickness a bit something like that would work yep that's fine and now let's see roughly what is happening we are increasing this and this is happening another thing that we want that these particles who are getting affected by the ball they should also change the color so let's get back to our geometry okay so now understand one thing the information which we need comes from this node setup all right now i will get in a stored name attribute connected here and we want the information of all the objects being affected by the ball that comes from here the endpoint is this just connect it there use float and use instances since this is all working on instance all right next thing what i want you to do is name it anything i will name it col for color and i will also get in a shader editor now press new and i will get in a set material node 
plug it in this is material 004 i will give this material 004 all right and i will also let's see get in an attribute node if you press col connect it there it all turns black and a thing of the sort like we want nothing is happening until we add in a realize instance in between and add in a color ramp now you will see all the objects being affected by the ball are changing color and now you can simply play with it i will just get them closer maybe also drag this a bit back somewhere there and i will use it as a mask between two shaders let's add in a mix not just mix shader and i will use it as a as a mask connected here connect uh, this here and maybe plus psdf let's connect them in let's plug that in there not what we want let's reverse this up something like this should happen all right great now let's increase the roughness of this i will also add in a mix shader again let's add an emission add an emission Let's give it some color. Let's give it blue. And I will also mix, mix it like that. Let's increase the emission like this. And I think we are done. Let's see what happens if we increase it. Pretty dope, right? It's also, I think, it's up to you. I mean, let's get this a bit closer. Somewhere there. Another thing which you can do is you can simply copy it down select this information here connect it here and you can use this as a mask now right now the thing is by using this all the objects will take the action i mean they will all move but this is strictly for the color let's increase this to the back somewhere there let's brighten it up like that maybe that is the sweet spot let's get them closer only i think that's that let's see now you simply have to come here in the timeline have a keyframe for this Control t and let's have it a four around four second loop let's have it there now this should be if you press t press linear now this should be a continuous loop and now you have one ball placed here but what if you what if you want more than one ball all right so first of all i will tip the to copy it down come into my graph editor right there select these two points and just slightly move it down or up maybe just behind and right now if you play the animation and if you see one of the balls is affecting the other ball is not affecting so let's get that started in our geometry nodes part and i will get in a math node that let's plug it in here this information should be here only and i will simply copy these two down and select this ball i think it was phase 001 i will select sphere 001 here and now if you plug it there in the add node they both will be taking an effect and by now you will also have to adjust the light i mean it is a pretty strong effect now something like that now you have two balls affecting the tool you can add as many objects as you want so in my original file i added around seven balls if you had seen that on instagram and this is a setup for that so this is it i just hope you were able to follow along if you got stuck anywhere just comment down below and i will try to help you out thank you for watching until next time